Hey everyone, I'm Rather Go here, back with more heavily modded XCOM 2. We're going into Operation Ocean Lore, a moderately difficult rescue VIP from Cell Mission. The VIP is a scientist, I'd rather an engineer, I've got plenty of scientists, but hey, better than nothing, so that's what we're doing. Now, coming over to the actual team, we have uh, shotguns, we have uh, two sappers, we have two assaults, we have a combat engineer, and we have a marksman pretending that this Shadow Keeper's guaranteed hit is basically a shotgun. We also have the Axis on one of these people, yeah, on Mercury Hawk, there are a lot of corporals, some squaddies. I'm honestly just thrilled to have these soldiers coming back, because I'm kind of low on manpower at the minute. So, let's get in there, let's see how it goes. Oh, before we get into it though, real quick, YouTube showing, like, comment, subscribe, blah blah blah, you know the drill, thank you, goodbye, let's go. I didn't check what the name of this mission was. Tell me it was Rescue VIP and not Rescue Blank Affiliated VIP. Please, please, please. Just don't tell me I have a faction ally starting somewhere other than with my squad. Because if I do, this mission just got tremendously harder and I didn't equip it correctly. Six men. All right, good. Um, so this is a normal mission. If you have like a Templar starting up here and you're getting help for the mission, it's because when you rescue this guy, you have to deal with four turns of reinforcements, two, two at a time. Like you have turn one, two reinforcement pods, turn two, two reinforcement pods, then one on three, then one on four, and then you get to leave. And this mission, I get him, I get in the evac, and I leave. It's way easier. I'm glad that I am not playing the other mission type. It's lucky that I've gone 12 missions without seeing one. Since we all have concealment, we just take our closest soldier up top, see what he sees. Hi there, Frostpod. Well, I got something for you. Let's have somebody move around on the low ground so we can get better eyes on exactly where this detection ends, why we're getting caught there. I was saying it would get detected if I ran down, didn't it? Oh yeah, it would, because I was going there. I'm going to drop into this location. Hopefully we can take a good shot from there. On my sapper, I'm just going to run as far forward as I can, which is, you know, actually still just up here on the roof. Which is kind of nice. It's a great way to move forward. Sonic Serenade will get a little bit closer. My Marksman absolutely wants to be on the roof. And my other Assault, just for the sake of diversity and positioning... Nope, never mind, he's going on the roof. Well, I briefly tried to put him somewhere else. And then reality hit, and I put him on the roof, like you always do. No, don't go on top of your roof, come over to my roof, it's great, the water's fine. There's no one with flamethrowers waiting in the trees, that would be crazy. Now, with their current positioning, A, it looks like they're running through, so they'll be on the low ground again, but B, it looks like I can just try to circle around to the high ground and catch them like that. We got 11 turns, that's plenty, let's go. Now, I do think it's worth probably just splitting off my sniper entirely. I don't think I need them for this pod. I'd rather use them to get eyes around the map and just have more information going into these fights, because if my sniper never sees anything, that means everything is wherever the rest of my team is going. Which would be bad. Hopefully that's not the case. I can run here just to peek around the corner. I think that's worth doing. It's obviously further from going up top, but let's be real, if we need to go up top, then Total Hobbit's is doing all the work anyway. Yeah, they went straight over, there's a stun lancer there, there's a second pod between buildings. Thanks for the inside information, game. At some point, they'll turn around. We have no way of predicting when that is, but they shouldn't be able to make it up top in that pivot no matter what, so that's fine. Now, knowing the stun lancer is there, this could get cut off pretty hard. The tower's pushing me towards it. Let's blue move here and see if it gets eyes. If it doesn't, as far over as the stun lancer was, I should be safe on the back of this location. Still no eyes on the pod. Total Halibut's furthest position is, um, well, that's not actually corner cover, unfortunately. I'm definitely doing this to get the best possible eyes on everything. Let's see what I get. Unsurprisingly, I saw more than what I'd previously seen. Oh, there's just another pod right there. Uh, is that Stun Lancer pod, maybe? Yeah, they moved over here. All right, that's actually kind of good. I think everyone just, you know, shuffles around because there's no cover on this right side to get behind, so they're all going to go around the long way, unfortunately. There's not really an alternative routes. The assaults definitely want to be on top. The sapper that's already at ground level, though, doesn't really have much of a reason to not move here, I think. I feel like it's just beneficial. It's probably not. I didn't think about it. This is a hell of a no man's land. I just put them next to if we get into a fight now. And it gives us the possibility to get pinned if they just run at the map edge like psychopaths. 
Now, I don't think you can angle your flamethrower down from the second story roof. I'd be happy to be wrong about that, but I don't think it goes that far. If it does, they're dead. Just immediately, always taking the attack. Because wiping out an entire frost pod is incredible. But yeah, you can't really angle the flamethrower down two stories. I can chuck a defensive mine over the edge and overwatch crap them. What are the alternatives? Let's go over to my sniper, because they're just walking around concealed. We can get on the door. Peak Kring and Steel it just lets me run through civilians. It's hilarious in that regard. Hi there. Where is the man I am looking for? He is here. And getting there is like running through a maze. It's kind of ridiculous. Can I go up top instead? There is a thing here that drops maybe where I want to be? Hard to say. Being inside this building looks like a death sentence. I'm going to go somewhere else. I'm going to go over here to this ladder and figure out what I'm doing next turn. Good to know there's a pod there, but can't really do anything about it. Now, back to fear and panic. Is this a better defensive mine? It is precisely the same defensive mine. We have turns to burn. What we do here is we position as well as we can. We take our overwatches. If they run into us, we risk the beagle shot and we get the best overwatch as we can. If we're being discovered, it's because of this. That would just be a mine on one guy. It wouldn't actually be that good. I don't think it's worth doing because it increases the odds that we pull this turn from minor to tremendous. I'm just going to move here and overwatch this turn in case we pull. It's not a great thing. All right, they're pivoting back now. That means if they don't get on top, we know where they're going. And we're going to be ready for them. Meanwhile, the sniper's over there on Mission Impossible playing his own game, trying to get the objective accomplished. We're just like, we're going to get the frost pod. Fuck them. They're going down. This is a blue move up. I don't want to walk up directly on top of a turret. And the more I move, the more likely that is to happen. Cool. Just going to run here then. Because it should be safe. Now, Mr. Mission Impossible, where are you going to go? Uh, see, that's the issue, really. Are we actually fighting now? I think I can take a flamethrower from here that gets all of them. Like, I can circle around like this with blue move bug and peek from concealment. And then flamethrow the entire pod. And I think we just... We're not waiting, we're going. Yep, there we go. Whole pod. Combat engineer, do your thing. Take them out. Oh, what a beautiful thing it is to counterclass entire pods. Necromancer's on the verge of death. Frost Lancer is one shotable by anything. Oh, you're just gonna stand still in the fires and summon a dude? Ballsy, I'll be very upset if he runs right for no discernible reason. Now, what's happening with you guys? Stun Lancer, Priest, Purifier. That's actually our first normal Priest of the game. Now, obviously, we're not content to allow you to do that. You you have to quit that shit. <laughs> we're going to take our 100% to kill you. You need to not be under us resurrecting people. Oh, he has melee vulnerability. That's a sectoid. I hadn't really put that together yet. You think the first time I killed one and it said dropped sectoid corpse, I would have noticed. Going to move almost all the way up to this stun lancer. Give him a present. And two shotgun shells is enough to kill him, but that Frost Lancer is flanked in my current position, and two shotguns is enough to kill him, too. Alright, we have a Sapper and Crying Wolf left. Crying Wolf does not have the ability to guarantee kills anywhere. There is no flank coming from this side. There's a Purifier all the way back there, so we don't want to stack up. A grenade from here will kill the Stun Lancer in conjunction with the defensive mine, so I take the guarantee. There's an argument to use shotgun shots instead, but that's a ridiculous argument that I will not be humoring. One action is better than two. I don't need that grenade. Is there an argument to shooting him now that it saves the defensive mine? Like, who's running at him? What's the point? I'm going to sweep all the way to the right here to get a better angle on this grenade. And I'm going to use this grenade to A, fuck up this corner cover, and B, damage this purifier. This almost certainly means that we're going to be fighting the next pod right after this. But that's not a big deal. And yeah, Spectral Frost Zombie's just hanging out. He's still there. 
Alright, good. I thought he was running at my sniper for a hot second. That is an interesting animation for climbing down. I like it. Also, unlike normal zombies, he's booking it. He's going. Thankfully, no dash attack. I was unsure for a second. Stasis on Sonic Serenade is honestly completely fine. I obviously don't want him in stasis, but if it has to happen, it has to happen. Yeah, goodbye, buddy. Purifier is going up top. Well, that just means he's dead to the next explosive guaranteed now. Nice pistol. Good try. Now, do we have to fight them this turn or no? Yes, they're coming around. That might mean we have a good AoE on the Purifier. Looking like no. I got bad news, Sniper. This is my high ground. <laughs> Little did you know it was taken. Unless there's a turret, in which case I'll go ahead and not shoot you in the back. Ah, oh, no turret. That's a damn shame for you. Now, I could have shot the Purifier as well, but there are plenty of other people perfectly capable of doing that on their own time. I could just flamethrower this guy. He's got 10 mobility. As long as I'm running forward, he can't catch me. Right? So I'm just going to leave. <laughs> just no thanks. Put a rocket vaguely in the middle of him. Someone will get hit. Unlikely it doesn't kill something. Bye, Purifier. Technically dead to fall damage, so I get the loot. Nice. Uh, is running gun worth it here? I get to full cover. I need somebody else to get a grenade first. Uh, looks like we're giving up on cover since that rocket blew up. Uh, he's a combat engineer. He'll be fine. But there's nowhere to go with cover for anyone else is the problem. Oh, I don't need to go. I can just chuck this behind me. If the zombie comes for me, he'll just fall to the ground. I'll be safe. Cool. Oh. It still works. It's not what I was planning on, but it works. Oh, also, this is on fire. I really should not run and gun onto that truck. It would be a very bad decision. Glad I noticed that. Would have been embarrassing if I had made that move. Got a shot on him for a guaranteed kill. Seems like a sensible thing to do. No reason to make any other move. Does Sonic Serenade unstasis at the end of my turn and just get shot? That would be very bullshit if it does. I don't think it does. I don't need running gun here. Going here is a mistake. Going out this way is a little bit weird, but it might be the play. There's not a bunch of great positions around here, you know? I think it actually is run and gun at the sectoid. It's not great, but all the other plays seem decidedly worse. 66, huh? Always surprised by that. No real chance of killing, though. What's my shot on the sectoid? I've got a 1 in 2 and a 2 out of 3 that comes out to be... That comes out to be a 1 in 3 chance of killing the Sectoid. It seems better than the alternatives. Because there's no way I'm ever killing the other guy. Well, that's a petty. In that case, I'd like to make it abundantly clear that I hate corner cover, and it's not okay. Good luck finding real cover. If you do, I'll destroy it too. Yeah, he just he's in the open now. Man, Stasis is rough. God, you gotta love the proximity mine. You think you're about to flank me, you idiot? Oh, that's so nice. He's just dead. He's, he's taken four damage and fall damage. He's gone. Probably. I don't actually know. He might be alive. That would be unfortunate. So this truck's, like, not really exploding, I guess. Excuse me? What the f What do you mean, one? <laughs> do you have a dodge chance? This is mobility, that's defense, that's armor, right? So this is your dodge chance. What that was is I got the 4% to dodge, which meant it dealt less than one damage, or one damage exactly, negating entirely. When damage is negated to zero, the game doesn't tell you what the odds were or what happened. That was a 4% dodge. I didn't even know that soldier had dodge. I'm gonna walk over here to pick up the loot. Drop a grenade on this truck so that it will finally explode. It shouldn't kill the sectoid. That was so fast. Is that even going to hit him? What am I doing? It did hit him. Truck's still not exploding. Can I reposition? Not on this soldier. Just going to run forward and take a shotgun shot. 
I thought it would explode. Really did. Any shotgun shot kills it now. This seems like a fine candidate. Good luck, Gothic Toaster. Over here, do I have a slash on the other guy? I do not. That's perfectly fine, though. Finally. On Toaster, we can... Uh, do we have the grenade here? All right, we, we redistribute the labor. It goes like this instead. I was planning on grenading with Serenade and shooting with Toaster, but we got there eventually. All right, now I need you to shoot the sectoid so that we get the loot. Otherwise, the car explodes and we don't get the loot. And now you can run forward and chuck your grenade and kill the priest because we don't need priest corpses. What we need is no wounds. This should, again, blow up the car, hopefully for real this time. There we go. And I think that's just, like, literally everyone dead. So we'll come down here to open this next turn and smooth, smooth mission. No wounds, no real resistance. Get this door open. Unfortunately, we have no tech specialist again. It's going to happen a lot at the start of runs where I just don't have enough tech specialist to go around. Only a 10% for this intel. I'd love to get it. But yeah, any tech specialist gets that intel and we just don't. It's acceptable. Not good, but acceptable. Let's get this VIP out of here. Oh, you really can't make it? Well, we'll get there next turn. As for everyone else, we can just group up, get out of here next turn. What do we get for the loot, though? A Lilirium Core and a couple of alloys. You know, the minimum. Everyone who's just, like, standing out in the open can pull back, group up a little bit. Make sure if there is another pod, we're not pulling it this turn. It looks like it's just... An easy win. Um. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, we got time. We got time. Uh, scientist, man, you can get out of here if you want to. We're going to farm a little bit. Everyone line up. Get in the firing line. I, I promise, it's not a purifier. No one's going to die horrifically for this. Besides, you're all at full health, cowards. Just going to move a little bit further forward to make sure that he can get out next turn. You can get over an overwatch. The sniper can overwatch. It's going to be great. Good luck, Advent. Nice reinforcement drop. I like the floating corpse of foreshadowing as it flies in. Those aren't purifiers. Those are just normal guys. Dead guys. I will eat my hat if anyone lives through this. I'll have to get a hat, I guess, to eat it. Does it count as eating your hat if you like, specifically purchase a hat that's meant to be edible? They're all gonna die. Oh, right, yeah, you take all your shots and then the mine goes off. It's really unfortunate. Well, they still all died. Even if we miss our shots against this last guy, mine gets them. All right, now we can go. Now that we've cashed in on that little free experience that Advent was giving us. And that is everyone out safe and sound. I may have just accidentally forgot to move with Gothic Toaster last turn and got it down to one turn timer screwing around, but it's fine. MVP on Sonic Serenade, three kills, 22 damage. Every single shot landed and they got kill stealer. Seeming Worka not doing a lot, but they did kill the shit out of that one guy on the roof, which was nice. Total Halibut doing good work. Not with the guns, never with the guns, but did enough good work elsewhere that he didn't need to do anything with guns. Great stats out of the Assault. All right stats out of Gothic Toaster. Great shot accuracy out of Crying Wolf, actually. But yeah, Sonic Serenade easily with the best performance. Good job, team. Promotions across the board. Good job, team. Take Blast Padding on our Sapper Gothic Toaster on our other Sapper. Going up to Sergeant, first one this campaign. We have Air Burst Grenades for slightly increased explosion radius. Demolition. Which, as it always underperforms, I'll be skipping out on this one and smoke screen. As much as I like utility grenades, air burst grenades for just better explosives is the easy choice for me. Then on our assaults, we're going to be taking honed edge if that's what we're getting. And if we're going higher than that, which we are, we have another sergeant we're taking breakthrough. On Seething Orca, this is our first sergeant sharpshooter. Now, stalker is not what we're doing. Typically speaking, the cell tree is just not what I'm looking for with my marksman. 
10% crit chance against enemies that are flanked and cannot see you, or rather cannot see you, is not great. Stalk is incredible. Stalk is basically you are invisible when you press that button. However, there's not often situations where I need that. I might consider buying this with AP for specific missions on specific characters, but not just a general thing. Efficient targeting, I don't even carry hollow targeters we're going to be talking about, which narrows it down. We're taking high approach angle. If you have high ground, they have half the cover they used to. Incredible ability, always taking that on my marksman. And lastly, we have another Sergeant Combat Engineer in Total Halibut. Welcome to Rouse. We're going to see how it does this campaign. We're rebelling against the militia, and we've taken it and been disappointed by it on every soldier for so long. Welcome aboard, new scientist. How are we doing on manpower? If we are to look at the number of soldiers we have, we are at supply drop available. Thanks. Six ready. Oof. Wanted more than that. All right. Let's keep scanning the stockades and finding this engineer. The power relay is on, which means we can build something else. What was I looking to build? I believe it was a uh, resistance ring or resistance comms. We don't really need resistance comms right away. Guerrilla Tactics School would let me infiltrate with more people, but here's the real deal with that one. I don't have people to infiltrate with. So being able to bring a 7th or 8th soldier at this point in time is not helpful. Resistance Ring might actually just be good enough since I have Between the Eyes. I think without Between the Eyes, I'll be looking at maybe Training Center, but probably Resistance Comms. But I'm going to go with the Resistance Ring since I have Between the Eyes. I think it makes it worth it. Um, no, you're you're not digging that up. Stop that. You're digging this. <laughs> or sorry, you're not building that. You're digging this up. The resistance ring will get built on its own automatically eventually. And then we continue scanning for another engineer because God knows we need more of these guys. Yet again, our monthly income down by 40. <laughs> what do you mean ring facility required? What are you talking about? This is just an old tutorial that's not even relevant to the way covert infiltration works. That's just inaccurate at this point. Den Mother is back on board. Oh my god, we have a hero unit. We got our sergeant back. We got Revolver Ocelot back. And we have a Templar. Holy shit. We have a unit that you can't just recruit. Look how cool he is with his little machine gun and his Cyclops eyes. Oh man. I have no idea what starting rank he is. I'm just happy to have a Templar. That's some more stuff we can do later. We have a bunch of covert ops that just appeared because of the Templars now. Spare parts one gives me, um... All Proving Ground projects forever are 20% cheaper is interesting. But we don't have a scientist to spare, or a soldier for that matter. Dodge plus 10, not interested in stacking. Experimental items, not too important. Trial by fire, double AP point gain. And mobility plus one. Do I have the guy that I need for that? Do I have the assault ready? Flagship Inferno will be back in three days. We don't have the manpower. I only have 13 people. I don't think I'm safe to do it. And possibly more importantly, we'll have things to do next month anyway. It looks like our Templar is just starting at Squatty, but hey, he's still got Ren and that's still a guaranteed hit. I'll take it. Let's keep on scanning those stockades. It's about time for the supply drop to roll around. 16 ability points. Our 18 marksman is back. Black Cat is back if tired. Anyway, back to scanning and the supply drop hits. What's the monthly income? 288? Damn, that's solid. Five guerrilla ops, one retaliation stop, two regions contacted, seven covert actions. That just seems incredible. That seems like a fantastic month. They're cracking down on my income. You know, like you do. He's probably also doing that. He might be doing something else now that he can. He's increasing his strength in combat. Not a fan. All right. We have Advent World checkpoints coming through. Decreasing supply drops is annoying, and I don't want it to happen, but it's not huge. Uh, risk of capture on all covert actions is completely unacceptable. We had to stop that. And hidden events just have to be stopped because, you know, they could be like left behind. They could be the worst case scenario. So, rural checkpoints is probably happening, and supply drops just get gutted for the rest of the campaign. Unless I can pull out a miracle and stop all three of these, which is six missions. It's really hard to do. The next facility is also hitting in one week, and I'm nowhere near ready to start knocking those down. So, the Avatar project is going to start taking along really, really fast. But that's fine. It's honestly not a huge deal. The supply drop is up to 461 supplies. I'll probably pick that up as soon as I get the engineer. But first... Covert Ops, and most importantly, Recruit Reaper in progress. Recruit Skirmisher in progress. New mission for Recruit Reaper. Hell yeah. 
Absolutely. I have a field medic, a field support, and a combat engineer available to go on this. Mobility plus one is nice. Only one of these is an 18 soldier. So, Den Mother, I'm going to give it to you. Because there is a risk of ambush, I will absolutely be sending a second soldier. And it also helps get rid of the wound risk. So, that's nice, too. Now, as to who it is, the answer is just like literally who is the worst soldier I have. Because you are just a body. Is it this Marine? No, because you're currently my only Marine. Do I have multiple field medics? No. <laughs> what class do I have multiple of? A common engineer doesn't count. <laughs> See, the neat thing is, when your roster is empty, there isn't a worst soldier. Fascinating. Also, this field medic is a sergeant, and they're going on the other mission. It'll be the tech specialist revolver ocelot. Easy choice. I finally found the bad unit. Anyway, get in your civilian disguises. You have a mission. They're going to be gone for 14 days, 7 hours. They'll be back with the Reaper. Their minor chance of ambush, but they should be able to get out between the grappling hook and the disguises. Shouldn't be a problem. Or, you know, Din Mother should be able to get out. Not so sure about the other guy. We're going to recruit the skirmisher for sure. Health plus one doesn't really matter to me. So we just send the weakest sergeant, which will be that medic, I believe. Sergeant combat engineer, we need that for missions. Sergeant field medic, we don't need that for anything. Now, who's the worst soldier available? That's a hard question because they're all good soldiers. Because they're soldiers and I'm out of them. I have two assault infantries available, two combat engineers. I won't buy one tech specialist because, you know, he's nice. He gets intel when he goes on missions. Not that they ever get to go on missions. But, you know, theoretically, it's really helpful. I have two sappers, and I don't think I need both sappers. In terms of squaddies, this is an 18 unit that I want to aim stack. I can't send you. You're my only Marine. I need you for, you know, the Warlock, the Assassin, the Viper King. Can't be sending him out. Gothic Toaster's barely a corporal. I'll send out them. And of course, we send everyone in civilian disguises. Minor ambush risk again. If they get caught, it's a lot harder for them because, you know, there's no grappling hook on this one. That's pretty much all it is. But these disguises make these missions so much safer. Even if they do get ambushed, we should be good. Now, we have mobility plus one. That'll go on flagship Inferno once we have time. Recover alien corpses for plus aim. That'll go on white wolf once we have time. I don't have a sergeant to spare for the avatar project, man. I don't think that one's happening. We have the feedback resistance order. That's nice, but not the biggest deal, to be honest. It's not something I can rely on. It's just random throughput. We can counter chosen activity to prevent them from lowering our resources, but again, it's not the biggest deal. I don't have a sergeant to spare for that. We are absolutely not hunting the chosen, and allow me to repeat that, we are absolutely not hunting the chosen. Now, an interesting thing is because I have promotions available here, uh, that sergeant that I have that I keep saying isn't able to go on a mission because I need him. Uh, like, what's he at? 35 of 60? He's into it. He's a great class. I'm going to have somebody take this mission at some point to skip through Sergeant, but not yet, I guess. I'm basically out of soldiers, right? I've got 11. I can send out one more, maybe, maybe. Over the course of the next 21 days, I need to send someone out on exhaustive training. I need to send out my flagship Inferno, my mobility stacking assault on this. White Wolf, my aim stacking Marine on this. My tech specialist isn't a Sergeant yet, is he? No, Dead Titan is currently a corporal and barely a corporal, so they're never going on that hack stack mission. Unfortunate, but it is what it is. Okay, so we scan this for six days, hopefully uninterrupted. Then we go to the black market on the way to the supply drop. And here we have someone on the proving ground, someone clearing debris, infirmary resistance running underway. Everything else is done. All right, that sounds good. Let's scan. All right, let's assign a new project. Our one pioneer now has a rocket launcher, which is, you know, dope, but not particularly helpful, to be honest. I think we actually want the Skulljack at this point in time, and not because we want to, like, progress the game, but to start skull mining people and making intel and improving the hack stat on my tech specialist. And the rest of this just, like, this is not for a spark I'm ever making. I don't want chem thrower upgrades. Experimental ammo and grenades are nice. It's good to roll these roulettes. Same with heavy weapon eventually, but not yet. I don't have any heavy suits. But I think Skulljack is the most unambiguously good thing I can do for the time being. Also, I'm out of money. Uh, wasn't expecting that. I don't have anything I need to buy, so it's fine. Feeling like I didn't need to make all this Predator suits, man. We have Regal Don, the Reaper. What rank does he come in at? Corporal, thank God. I was worried that he would be a squaddy like that Templar. Dude, shut up. I'm trying to go look at the Reaper you gave me. <laughs> Corporal Regal Don, he has some starting traits. He's likely to hunker down after their first move. That's not too bad. He's also the hunter of Archons. Um, that's optimistic. If you live that long, we can talk about it. 
So, coming over to Reapers, <laughs> we it's been a while since we talked about a Reaper. He was around for one mission. They have, I don't think I covered them properly. They have Shadow Meld now. The way this works is whenever they're in stealth, they gain Shadow Stacks. This reduces their detection radius, increases their crit chance. And if you start your turn concealed, you gain a Shadow Stack. You gain an additional Shadow Stack if you hunkered down and were concealed the previous turn. But, like, you don't really want to do that. Anyway, attacks that do not break concealment through Silent Killer consume Shadow Stacks. Silent Killer being this perk where you consume Shadow Stacks. Two for primaries, one for secondaries when you shoot people from stealth. And that way, if they die, you consume the stacks. You don't lose stealth. It's very nice. No longer random like it used to be. We also have Fade. At the beginning of your turn, you enter concealment if no one can see you. And we have Ambush. This just means you can say, hey, even though we're concealed, do the Overwatch. And that's really, really nice. Come over to promotions on Corporal and Sergeant. I always go phase and to vanish. The reason for this is you take a flank shot from stealth, you hit the guy, you then use your reposition to break line of sight, and then vanish makes fade check whether or not you're going to reconceal at the beginning and end of your turn. So now, rather than waiting for them to do stuff, and if they don't see you at the start of your turn, you conceal, you break line of sight and reconceal instantly guaranteed with vanish. It's a very neat thing you can do. Death from above is just transparently super strong. It's the main argument against doing this. The reason I tend to go for this, though, is um, infiltration sort of sucks. <laughs> infiltration is not that helpful. It's definitely nice if you're reconcealing all the time like this, but that's requiring AP spending. Hawkeye is just not that good. Hawkeye Death from Above is definitely tempting. It's just typically I'm scouting, so I'm not in a position to benefit from this. Phase and Vanish is just how I play my Reapers. There's a lot of argument to other routes through this, though. Oh, also, I have AP to spend, and I want this unit to be alive and doing stuff. What did I roll, by the way? No low profile, unfortunately. I did get Squad Sight Stunning Shot again. And Deadeye. And Defensive Mine. Tactical Rigging is not as huge. Speaking of, I have a Tactical Rigging mod. Previously, Tactical Rigging gave your hero units an extra item slot, which was very asymmetrical in its power level compared to other things. This instead gives limited use consumables and extra use across all of your item slots, which to me is a much more interesting and fair implementation. I don't think this is worth 15 AP to me. I think there are better things to spend AP on later. So I'm not going to buy anything just yet on this Reaper. Also, Iron Rhino got a promotion at some point. I think just now, and I forgot to upgrade them. We're going to take a lead the target for Corporal Snipers every single time. The more ways you have to ambush people without triggering Beagle Rush maneuvers or doing it during your turn and then take actions, the better. So lead the target's just incredible. We're nine hours from mag weapons, not that we can afford them right now, but that's also fine because we don't want to build them yet without the bridging tech anyway. Sure, we could build lots of stuff and we get a couple of freebies. Oh, uh, was that a... Uh... Oh, it's inspired. Yeah, I'm sorry, mate. I just don't care. Gauss weapons requires Advent Mech Breakdown. Yeah, about those Advent Mechs, buddy. I, I don't know about that. Oh, that's really annoying. I was bottlenecked so hard on this one unit that just isn't showing up. I think it's gotta be resistance radio. It's gotta be resistance radio. There's no way it's anything else. Now, getting back, we're gonna continue scanning this. Oh, well, I was hoping to end this shortly on a mission I liked playing, but I guess I'll cut this out after I run away from everyone like you do. Operation Dusty Paramore. Don't say medics never did anything for anyone. Rampant Mystery nearly got pinched here. This was a bit of a rough win, but it looks like we're gonna make it. As long as I put you in, like, any tile of full cover, I think you're fine. I don't think there's a flank if I move here. So that's where I'll move on Fantastic Fox. Should be pretty safe. And this should also be pretty much completely safe as well. And then we'll get out of here, and almost nobody got hurt. And everyone lived happily ever after. Fuck ambush missions, as always. Yeah, they're out for 28 days, but you know what? They're fucking alive. Good job, Fox. Now, more importantly, uh, no one cares about any of that. Yeah, yeah, supply drop available. That's not what I'm here for either. Depressed Draugr is here. We have a skirmisher again. Also, uh, that's a corporal that'll be back in 28 days. Nice. So, what are we looking at for that new skirmisher? They are a corporal. They have no traits. I'm happy to see that because I'm more afraid of negative traits than I am enthusiastic about good ones. Once again, we're going to take explosive action and we're not going to explode after pressing the button this time. It's going to be great. Also, we can afford to buy some other perks. And I'm going to be real with you. I'm. Uh, is this an A-Team soldier? 
I want Shredder and Heavy Hard Points. I've got them both. I also have Total Combat and Tack Rigging. Uh, this is actually damn near perfect. Do I care so much about not dying that I'm about to buy Adaptive Alloy Plating? I'm 100% buying Sprint. Sprint's just absolutely incredible. It's just a free action. Like, this is a game about action economy, and that is literally just a free action. Combat conditioning is really good. The aim's nice. The mobility is incredible. Once I buy that, though, I'm, like, committed to buying this, too, right? I mean, yeah, but he's the A-Team soldier. I can't spend this on anyone who's not a hero soldier. A little bit egregious going a bit hard on that. Uh, <laughs> just going to do it before I think too hard about it. So, yeah, he'll live for sure this time. Anyway, I'm going to be spending a lot of AP on this soldier. I've, I I saw how good this was. I really want to invest stupid AP into a skirmisher and see how strong a super soldier like that feels. And uh, yeah, next rank, we won't reinforce gabling, we won't hit and run, and we won't phase. And maybe total combat, which, uh, you know, just another 75 AP next rank, and we, we totally won't do it again the rank after that, right? Adaptive alloy plating was not worth buying. Maybe even combat conditioning wasn't. This was, uh, this was incorrect. But hey, Nelly's less likely to die, and he'll feel comically worse when he does die. All right, back on that engineer grind, and we're about to scavenge some alien loot, but first, oh, that's incredible. I forgot that was even a mod I had installed. There is a covert action chain called Spark Heist. You don't have to build all your sparks, you can steal some from Advents. Requires a corporal that won't aim plus two. Hey, White Wolf, you ever heal up? Please? Hey, holy shit, he's here. Perfect. Worst soldier in the barracks goes to... Squatty Blind Alpha, who gets the corporal off doing the mission. Sign me up. Minor risk of soldier wound, that's what I like to hear. They'll be done in 11 days, 16 hours. No one's gonna get hurt, it's gonna be great. Good luck, folks. Begin action, that sounds incredible. Keep looking for that engineer. Alien loot comes in, what do we have? For fuck's sake, I just wanna go play normal missions. <sighs> Operation Silver Trap, let's go. All right, don't worry about the chrysalids and the chrysalid swarmers and the chrysalid infectors. By the way, we're at a high enough force level to see all that now. Everything's fine. Everyone go home, the rookies are safe. Especially Dark Horse, the one we cared about. And ignore the UI glitch, everything went perfectly fine. Everyone's home alive. We escaped the chrysalid hunters, we escaped the frost pod that dropped in right behind us. <sighs> I don't care about the supply drop, please stop. We got an Illyrium Corps, an Advent Trooper Corpse. I think there's a little bit more. Two Trooper Corpses. Yeah, two Trooper Corpses, two Officer Corpses, and a Sectoid Corpse, and three Tired Rookies. Oh, and all of them got promoted, too. Once again, back to scanning the stockade. A new Assault Mission. Hive Infested City. Gather Survivors. Rewards are Resistance Rumor, 18 Intel, Delayed Dark Event Rural Checkpoints. It doesn't tell me... I was thinking this was one of the missions where you saved soldiers, but this is not. We also have a good few sit reps going on. We have comms jamming to delay dropships, a one turn decrease mission timer, and also uh, we have Frost Legion Purge. Oh, there's more, <laughs> but wait, there's more. We have Frost Legion Purge. Advent groups are greatly increased in size, and presumably also there's more Frost Legion, and the Lost are here, and also uh, it's specifically about a hive infested city. A lot's going on in this mission. Hopefully it works out for us. This will probably be our first test run of a bunch of guys. We have three new hero units and a pioneer, which may as fucking well be a hero unit. All right, up next we have Operation Brass Scream. Difficult, gather survivors from abandoned hive infested city, a whole four sit reps. We're bringing our new skirmisher, Templar, Reaper, and pioneer in addition to combat engineers because da 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 for all Legion perks, it seems important. And we also have a sapper and in the back here, we have Magpie. This is one of the best teams we could have fielded. We have one, two, is it three or just two? We have two sergeants, two corporals, all of the heroes essentially. There are a couple of high ranking soldiers we didn't bring. I was aiming to have the best balanced top position and the best for this specific setup. But this is a very, very strong team. I'm feeling pretty confident going into this and I believe in this team. That's a big pile of sit reps and a mission type I've never done before. 
but I'm very confident going into this. I think they've got it. For now, though, I'm done. I've been playing in a marathon session. This whole campaign so far has been recorded over two days. So I'm going to take a good long break from XCOM, do a whole lot of editing before I get to playing the next mission. Hope you've been enjoying the series so far. I've been having a blast playing it. If you have, please do like, comment, subscribe. All that stuff really does help the channel grow. I really do appreciate it. And regardless, I'll see you in the next one.